So feeling exhausted all the time is something that I see very common in my practice. Um, I actually dealt with this myself with having hypothyroidism. And usually it's more than just having a bad night's sleep. So when we're living with chronic fatigue, whether you have hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's or you have something else, it's really tough. So, you know, especially as a thyroid warrior, we often struggle to understand like, why do we have um, fatigue so bad? Why is this so draining? Just remember that it's not your fault, okay? That heavy kind of crushing tiredness isn't necessarily a, a reflection of who you are or like your abilities. It's actually a real physical thing. So. And when we have wonky hormones um, and our thyroid's off, um, thyroid hormones might not be going inside the cells, it's very, very common to have this kind of tired, you know, crushing fatigue feeling. So I wanted to share some things with you, things that maybe you haven't thought about to kind of help you. So maybe you can get a little bit more energy and then how you can investigate that. So first and foremost is tackle priorities, okay? I had to learn this the hard way. I would make these to-do lists that were ridiculously long each day and I wasn't very realistic. So just remember, there's always tomorrow. Tackle your priorities, go after those first, the things that can be left till the next day or the day following day even, just leave those um, on the wayside so that you can get to the ones that are actually a priority because you need to preserve as much energy, energy as you possibly can. Also, a big one is avoid all the distractions. I know for me, when I was trying to tackle my priorities, I would get distracted very easily. Social media was one of the easiest ways that I would get distracted. Um, and I put so much energy into things like that instead of like the task at hand. Um, take some time to stretch, do some meditation, maybe do some deep breathing, um, breath work. We could all use this anyways, but this actually can re-energize your nervous system, which will always give you a lot more energy. Also staying hydrated. I can't emphasize this one enough. Make sure you're getting lots of water in. Um, you could even put a dash of Celtic sea salt in your water. Um, I like Celtic sea salt. I like Redmond sea salt. Um, there's you know several other types of like electrolytes that you can use. I actually um, have a link below for my absolute favorite one that I have been using more recently um, and with my clients called Bean Minerals. Um, and they're very, very effective for energizing you. They're trace minerals. Um, they're a liquid with no flavor, so they're fantastic to use, especially if you are really struggling with fatigue. Um, also make sure that you're being a little more mindful of the caffeine intake. And I, I know this is a struggle because when you have fatigue and you're tired, what do you want to go for? You want to grab the caffeine. But when we have caffeine overload, that can actually backfire on you and it can cause more harm than good. You probably aren't going to sleep as well. Um, your cortisol can get dysregulated, which will cause more fatigue in the end. So just be very mindful of how much caffeine you're taking in. Listen to your body. You have to listen to your body. Rest when you need to. Take a nap when you need to. This was something I had to really learn to do because I was this type A personality where I would just go, 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 kind of nonstop. Um, and I didn't give myself rest um, and time to just chill out and listen to my body like I needed to. I'm so much better at that now, but that is something I always suggest. You're not being lazy. You are literally giving yourself and your body time to reset and rest because when we are dealing with something like this and there are underlying things going on, you actually do have to rest when your body is telling you to rest. Um, get outside even, okay? Getting outside in nature, getting some sunlight. This can always give us a lot more energy as well. Um, and, you know, speaking of like vitamin D as well, a lot of people say, you know, get outside, get your vitamin D. You can still get some vitamin D and get some energy even when the sun's not out. I'm not saying when it's dark, but if it's cloudy, you're still going to get that. So just get outside and get, get it in nature. Um, and then at nighttime, one of the biggest things that I can say is be very mindful of the devices that you're on. So if you're scrolling on social media, on your iPad, on your phone, you're going to have a big reduction in the production of melatonin because all this fake light is gonna reduce that production. And then what happens, it, it, what's antagonist to melatonin is cortisol. So cortisol is gonna go up, that's an awakening hormone. So you're gonna have a hard time sleeping, you're gonna have a hard time getting your energy back, um, you know, on the, by the next day in other words. So be very, very careful with that as well. Um, I had to really learn this myself. Lastly, I wanted to say investigate. Do some investigating. Why are you so fatigued? Why are you so exhausted? There's probably some root causes for this. Um, this is something that I do with every single one of my clients inside my thyroid program. Um, we're always testing, testing, testing because I want to see what is causing this fatigue in the first place. Yes, if you have hypothyroidism and or Hashimoto's, that could be causing it. 
However, you know, sometimes people are even taking thyroid medication. They're like, I'm still exhausted. So there's a reason for this. So check all your thyroid markers. Make sure you are assessing all that. So looking at um, TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3. If you've never had it done before, get it done at least once. And then both thyroid antibodies. So TPO and TGAB. Um, sometimes it's abbreviated T TG. So it's thyroid peroxidase antibodies, thyroid globulin antibodies. These antibodies, you need to know if you have them. If they are present, your thyroid is getting attacked. You are going to have a big reduction in production of um, thyroid hormones, and that's going to cause a lot more fatigue. And again, it's an autoimmune disease. That's always going to cause some fatigue. So make sure you're getting a full thyroid panel. I would start with that. I personally um, like to look further than that because blood testing to me is only about 1% of the picture. So I'm looking at all your sex hormones. Um, and your adrenals. So I want to see your cortisol pattern. I prefer this on the Dutch test. And the reason why I prefer the Dutch test is because the Dutch test, um, you pee on these little strips over the course of 24 hours. So cortisol should be different at different times of the day. Um, and we really want to see a better picture of that. When you get it done on blood, you're just going to get a snapshot of whatever time you've got your blood drawn. Um, you want to see a pattern. And so you actually can see a graph on this. And so maybe your cortisol is dysregulated at a certain time, but it's okay at a different time. So when you do the Dutch test, you'll get a much better idea of what your cortisol looks like in conjunction with your sex hormones as well. The other thing that I really want to look at is mineral status. So every one of my clients, we start with something called HTMA, which is hair tissue mineral analysis. Everyone gets this test immediately when they work with me. Minerals are your little spark plugs. They are one of your biggest energy sources. You have to have those in check to, in other words, to have energy. Um, and they provide all the, the things that we need to actually help make thyroid hormone, help convert thyroid hormone, help thyroid hormone go in the cells. So this is probably out of all the testing that I do, probably my most favorite one that I do to help get energy back. It's so, so crucial to get these minerals in check and see what's going on there because they can be causing the biggest issue for why you have fatigue. So that's kind of where I would start if we're thinking about, okay, what can I do on my own? to help increase some of my energy. Now what else can I do if I want to go a step further? Um, let me look at some other testing. So I would ob obviously, like I mentioned, start with the blood testing, get that done no matter what. See what your numbers are. It can be normal. And I actually did a masterclass on this recently. Um, so definitely send me a message if you want the replay on that. But I did a, uh, it was a, a, about an hour and a half long masterclass on all the reasons why you can have a completely normal thyroid panel and still have the thyroid involved. And that's why you might be having fatigue. So let me know on that. But that's why, again, I like to look at blood testing, but it can look totally normal and you still have other issues going on with metabolism or your, you know, your thyroid, and that could be causing all your fatigue. So testing is absolutely essential. And that's why, again, like I said, I, I go a step further than just looking at blood because I think it's just such a small picture. So definitely let me know if you have any questions with this. Comment below if you would like the replay of that masterclass more than happy to send that to you. Um, and then I actually have the link below as well for those beam minerals that you could start right away um, with a discount code. It's 20% off by the way, which is a really good discount code. So like I said, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. Bye.